One year on, life for women and girls is very different, with harsh rules, including restrictions on education and employment. Our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, who was in Kabul last August, has returned there and sent this special report. It's a man's world. Afghanistan is a conservative country. But the rules are now set by the ultra-conservative Taliban. Spaces which had opened up for women have now been slammed shut. We met three generations of women whose lives speak loudly about their world. Many are afraid. They don't want to be identified. This woman used to be a senior official in the finance ministry. Last year, the Taliban told her, stay at home. A man would take her job. I worked for more than 17 years in the finance ministry. It was difficult with children, family and work, but I went to university and got my master's degree. We spent so much time to get here. Now we are back to zero. Everything is finished. More than 60 female civil servants have banded together. They shared some of the exchanges on their messaging group. We earned our jobs. If we accept this, it means we have betrayed ourselves. What's our crime? They want me to give my job to my brother. If we do this, we are removing ourselves from society. Please don't give up. We should be unified. Women haven't completely disappeared from the streets or ministries like health, education, security. There are spaces only for women. This market has just reopened in the western city of Herat. This was the first day. Women a bit nervous. Shops still empty. This is it? Yes. It's your shop. It's today is closed. Yes. When they were, oh, look at your sewing machines. 18-year-old Suhaila is excited. She's reopening this dress shop with her big sister. But she should be in her last year of school. Suhaila was the top student in her class. But the Taliban shut most high schools. I'm very sad to uh, get if I finish the school, I started university. But I uh, can't go to university because I'm not graduated from a school. Was it hard for you? No school, no shop. How hard was it? I think it's not for me and for all of the girls of Afghanistan. It's a sad memory that he ended in his school. Sorry. It's hard here too, far away in the central highlands. This is one of Afghanistan's poorest provinces. Since the Taliban took over, even poorer. And there's still no aid to their government. For the destitute and desperate, agonizing choices, this woman gave her daughter in marriage for about 1,000 pounds. She's only six years old. So is her husband-to-be. She's too young, but I give her away because we have no food. So my other children don't die of hunger. It's still very hard, but now she can eat with her in-laws. I had no other option but to give her away. Child marriage is prohibited but pervasive in Afghanistan but not this young. We've hidden the identity of mother, daughter, and son. Her in-laws told me they will take care of her, like their own child, because she's so young. They told me, don't worry. What mother wouldn't worry, what child wouldn't weep. A new generation takes shape in a new Afghanistan. The Taliban say the rights of boys and girls within Islam will be respected. But one year on, there's growing fear that girls who were learning to lead 
will be left far behind. Lise Doucette, BBC News, Kabul. Well, the Taliban's heartland was in southern Afghanistan, around Kandahar, which is the second largest city in the country. And as part of our one year on coverage, our correspondent Sikandar Karmani is there tonight, having reported extensively from different parts of Afghanistan, both before and since the Taliban takeover. Sikandar, what are your impressions of what this last year has meant for most Afghans? Well, two things stand out. The way that the Taliban stance has grown increasingly hard line over the course of the year and how different the experience of living under the Taliban has been for different Afghans. A lot of it depends on how they define freedom. For many teenage girls, they no longer have the freedom to go to school. Anyone wanting to publicly criticise the Taliban runs the risk of arrest, torture or even death. And many are deeply despondent here. But there are others for whom freedom has a very different meaning villagers who were already living by deeply conservative values. For them, freedom means being able to plough their fields without being uh, afraid of being caught in the crossfire of a gun battle. And for them, many of them at least, life under the Taliban is preferable to life at war. What unites Afghans is deep concern at the dire state of the economy. This is a country that was propped up by foreign spending. A lot of money is still coming in, but nowhere near as much as before the Taliban and its ordinary people who are seeing the consequences of that. Sikandar, thank you. Sikandar Kermani there in Kandahar.